when you say 99.998%, if anybody cheats, um, if, if anybody cheats, but it's not literally every move of every game or you don't catch them with like something in their shoe or their ear or whatever, they will not be caught. That is just a fact if this is going to be the threshold that they use going forward. Okay, so let's cover this article. It's from the New York Times, and it says, Cheating allegations loom over elite chess. Magnus Carlsen, the World Chess Championship winner, continues his protest against Hans Niemann. All right. Magnus Carlsen left in Hans Niemann the third round of Singfield Cup on September 4th. An article by Greg Keener, which starts with, the chess world has been shaken by a cheating accusation at the highest level of play since Magnus Carlsen's loss to Hans Niemann at the Singfeld Cup on September 4th, and Mr. Carlsen's subsequent decision to withdraw from that tournament. When they were paired again last week in the Julius Bayer Generations Cup, Mr. Carlsen resigned in protest without making a second move in the game. Mr. Niemann was eliminated from the event in the quarterfinals, but this did nothing to quell the rumors of impropriety that swirled around his play after his victory with the black pieces over Mr. Carlson. Neither Mr. Niemann nor a representative for Mr. Carlson responded to requests for comment. In Mr. Carlson's first public statement since the Julius Bayer Generation Cup, he said on Twitter on Monday, I believe that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted, Mr. Carlson added. Throughout our game in the Singfield Cup, I had the impression that he wasn't tense or even fully concentrating on the game in critical positions while outplaying me as black in a way I think only a handful of players can do. Mr. Carlson's statement sent shockwaves through the chess world just seven days before the U.S. Chess Championship, an elite 14-player round robin tournament in which Mr. Neiman is seated eighth. Now, this is the thing that I will say also, like, I assume that a lot of stuff is probably going to die down for a little bit. But once the U.S. Championship begins, you know, I have to say, I think that regardless of how Hans does, if Hans does really well, the speculation, the rumors, all this stuff is going to ramp up again. I also think if he does very poorly at the start, you're going to see the same thing where people are like, oh, like, look, he's, he's playing so badly here. It's obviously a sign that he's not playing at the level he was playing at in previous tournaments. So I don't think that this is is anywhere near dying down in the near future because regardless of the result you're going to hear people saying stuff like if he does really well then everyone's be like oh yeah obviously something's going on if he does very poorly it's be like see clearly with all these extra measures he can't play well um so it's kind of the what's the saying is it damned if you do damned if you don't kind of situation is, is what i feel like is going on here okay um, the international governing body of chess known as FIDE recently reminded players of a number of rules regarding cheating allegations, including penalties for players who make manifestly unfounded complaints. The rules are meant to deter players from accusing others without concrete evidence. Mr. Carlson's statement did not include evidence to support his accusation. There is more that I would like to say, he wrote. Unfortunately, at this time, I'm limited in what I can say without explicit permission from Neiman to speak openly. All right, now this is one thing that I think is actually scary. This is one thing that's scary because as I see it, when they when they talk about cheating, yes, you should not be allowed to make, you should not be allowed to basically come out and say, okay, so-and-so has cheated without proof. At, on the other hand, however, I think we're, we're, we're headed more and more into a situation where because of technology, the idea of, you know, concrete evidence is not going to be like, you know, like, what we're about to read about in 2013 with Borislav Ivanov, where it was very clear that there was something going on. I don't think we're going to be in a situation like that. I think in the future, there's probably going to be much more um, evidence is going to revolve around like uh, like algorithms and like statistics and things of that nature, as opposed to being like, okay, this guy has like, he's got something in his shoe or he's something in his ear or like something something in his, his, his butt or, you know, whatever it might be. I don't think that, that I, I think that this is actually... We're gonna, this case is really gonna say a lot um, about like whether things stay the same or they change somewhat. Um, okay, um, so let's keep going. In, in 2013, Borislav Ivanov, a FIDE master, was accused of cheating by using a device hidden in his shoes, and his refusal to remove his shoes at the request of an arbiter was taken as an admission of guilt. Mr. Ivanov became a pry in the world of professional chess and was stripped of his title. Many in the chess world believe that if Mr. Neiman does not allow Mr. Carlson to speak freely on the subject, the younger grandmaster will be treated similarly. FIDE's policy is designed to discourage unfounded complaints and prevent false positive, an instance in which an innocent player is wrongly accused. In fact, the organization may punish people who make cheating claims without strong evidence. 
But the desire of many players and spectators is an anti-cheating detection model that ensures no one is able to cheat and get away with it. Now, this is very important to note as well. Um, and I think we're gonna see a lot of changes for sure, because one thing that's very important to note here is that there, there, there are a couple, there are a couple things that, that I will say. Fabiano has said quite a bit too already about Ken Regan, who is the head, head, um, I guess he's like the head guy on the anti-cheat commissioner. He's like, he's one of the experts when it comes to statistics. Now, there are two things here um, that I, I will say. Now, one of the things that many people have already already uh, made a point about saying is this, this notion of prevent false positives. Now, obviously, if, if someone is cheating or accused of cheating, it's a very serious, um, very, very serious accusation. Now, from what I've heard from many people, Ken Regan's model, which is the one that FIDE is currently using, it is definitely designed to prevent false positives from happening by setting the bar so incredibly high that unless someone is literally cheating on every move, they most likely are not going to get caught. Many people have said this um, already. We've heard Fabiano say that he just simply, he said that someone was cleared by this me method or this model um, who Fabiano is sure was cheating at some point. So again, this I think is one thing that's very, very important to note. The second thing that I will add, speaking about Ken Regan, is that there is also a real world bias as, as, as I understand it in his model, which is that if so, the notion is that someone will not simply say, do something in one tournament, they'll repeatedly keep doing something over and over again, um, which, which definitely is a bias. And I think, I think things of this nature do need to be addressed and there probably will be, um, there probably will be changes for sure going forward. All right, let's keep going. Okay. Um, all right. Fide sets an extremely high bar for proving cheated. David Hayter, an international arbiter with extensive experience in this area, said in an email that the minimum standard that Fide will accept as a presumptive evidence that a person violated fair play is 99.998% probability that the person did in fact cheat. In other words, 99.9% .9 is not good enough. Now, this is very, this is why this case I think is going to be something really interesting to watch because either it's what a name, Mr. Hayter, he's, he's a very nice guy. I met him um, in St. Louis, but the, but the problem is that again, so if there's not a smoking gun, how do you get to 99.9%? .9 Let's just say, for example, someone does something in one game that will not be caught by anything, but one game is already too much in term, in terms of cheating. So when you say 99.998%, that means either you have to catch someone literally in the act or they have to be cheating every single game of every single tournament. And this is also a very scary statement in my opinion as well, because it's basically saying that if, if someone doesn't doesn't blatantly cheat, let's just say, let's just say someone goes plays plays in a tournament, let's just say, I don't know, like the French League or the Bundesliga or some event, and they cheat in one game, that will not be caught. And you will even even if like you know someone's gone to the bathroom every move, you even frankly you think you hear them clicking on something in the bathroom, you will not be able to actually they that nothing will happen. Um and what that means then, in fact, is that nobody can speak out on the issue. And in fact, I think in some ways it might even encourage encourage people to to feel feel like they can they can do something and get away with it. Um, so this this actually scares me hearing the statement. This does scare me quite a bit. Okay, um, Mr. Hayter, I'm, I'm, what a name by the way, what a last name by the way in the, in this day and age. Um, Mr. Hayter said, in every case that I've personally seen, the probability that the person cheated is significantly above the minimum, he added. In order to prevent false positives, the person referring the charges must ensure they have good evidence. Well, it's it's not actually about good evidence. They better have perfect evidence. It's not good evidence when you say 99.998%. Um, a few days after... Uh, or sorry, let me scroll up. A few days after uh, after Mr. Carlson resigned against Mr. Neiman at the Julius Baer Generations Cup, but before Mr. Carlson spoke out on Twitter, the president of FIDE, Arkady Dvorkovich, released a statement saying, we strongly believe that the world champion has a moral responsibility attached to his status since he is viewed as a global ambassador of the game. Mr. Dvorkovich added in an apparent, in an apparent admonishment of Mr. Carlson, we strongly believe that there were better ways to handle the situation. Mr. Dvorkovich did not announce any disciplinary action against Mr. Carlson or Mr. Neiman in the statement. Um, the, with speci specificity of 99.9998%, that means sensitivity will be incredibly low. That means a lot of false negatives. Exactly, that's that's the thing. Um, so basically the evidence has to be, you cheated every move. Like there, uh, again, this is why this case is gonna be very interesting. because if. If you, if you listen to a lot of videos, things you've seen, a lot of it is based on the statistics and things, you know, being outside the norm. But does that necessarily mean something? I mean, I would say that that doesn't, that doesn't hit the 99.9998%. So 
he needs a pair neutral neutral is is completely fine but saying 99.998 percent actually really concerns me really concerns me because then I I mean unless someone is blade let's let's just say someone goes to one turn and does something they're never going to be caught because you're not going to hit 99.998 percent so I'm a little bit a little bit scary like attaching a percentage probability to this um so all right let's keep going um Mr. Neiman acknowledged uh, in an interview earlier this month that he had violated rules of fair play in online terms on chess.com at least twice in the past. Some observers consider cheating online to be less serious than cheating in matches played in person. Mr. Dvorkovich explicitly rejected that notion in a statement on behalf of Fide. We reiterate our zero tolerance policy toward cheating in any form. Whether it is online or over the board, cheating remains cheating, Mr. Dvorkovich, or remains cheating. Mr. Dvorkovich also called for cooperation between major online platforms private events and top players earlier this month chess or earlier this month chess.com removed mr neiman from the site and uninvited him from future tournaments amid the cheating allegations the company which has a well-regarded anti-cheating detection method mechanism is set to merge with play magus group which was founded by mr carlson the chief chess officer of chess.com daniel wrench addressed rumors that the platform had shared a list of cheaters with mr carlson on reddit Nobody from C24, not even Magnus, is working, has worked, or has seen, been invited to see our systems. Mr. Wrench added that Mr. Carlson was not given a list of cheaters or any inside information about Chess.com's cheating detection algorithms, and that Mr. Carlson is and has completely acted 100% on his own knowledge, not sure, not sure where he got it, exclamp, and desires. Another question is how much to trust cheating detection systems to settle the dispute. Ken Regan, an associate professor of computer science and engineering at the University of Buffalo, developed the system trusted by FIDE to detect when a chess player is using computer assistance during a game. After analyzing Mr. Neiman's play over the last two years, Dr. Regan concluded that he was probably not cheating. But some have questioned how well Regan's model can detect a player who uses computer assistance only sparingly, maybe once or twice a game at key moments, in a scheme to evade detection. If Mr. Neiman is not cheating, the magnitude of his achievement is astounding. At times, who's this a quote from? Or no, this isn't a quote, I guess. At times, this play is so accurate that it leaves audiences and opponents alike in disbelief. He may already be the best player in the world, but if Mr. Neiman is cheating, the damage done to the game of chess may prove incalculable. Okay, so yeah, so this is an article we want to cover from the New York Times. Again, just reading through it, there, there are a lot of things that I think, um, a lot of things that I think are going to be addressed and potential big changes coming first of all like I said again this 99.998 percent probability statement definitely concerns me because that's essentially saying that unless you literally have a smoking gun or someone is cheating where they match computer every move they will get off when you say 99.998 percent if anybody cheats um if, if anybody cheats but it's not literally every move of every game or you don't catch them with like something in their shoe or their ear or whatever they will not be caught that is just a fact if this is going to be the threshold that they use going forward um so this definitely concerns me a little bit um the policy around false positives or um or false negatives i mean i assume well i actually i don't i don't know but my assumption is that when, whenever this panel is formed magnus will be able to go in front of them and literally say every single thing that's my assumption but again who knows from a legal standpoint if if he can do that or can't do that which is a very very big question um you know that's also a question i think probably chess.com probably plays some role in this too is will will they say something to this commission whatever the commission might be are they completely separate what exactly is going on so there's a lot of um there's a lot of stuff it feels like that has to be is going to have to be sort of sorted out um on one side or the other if that number 99.9 you'll flag some non-cheaters you okay with that again i'm not a stats guy but this is why i feel like this situation it's going to be very interesting to see see what happens like with all the different methods you know there are many different stat, stat, stats that have been put out there already and like people say that they're they're all wrong or you say this one's wrong that one's not wrong like i mean there's so many stats and um we'll we'll see we'll see we, we we will see again I'm not a stats guy so I don't I mean I don't honestly know the difference between 99.9 and 99.998 percent I'm just gonna say that to me that seems like the, the same number I'm sure some people will say like you're insane that's not anywhere near near close to being the same um but it, it seems like that to me so at any rate interesting article it seems like we're, we're gonna hear a lot of stuff going forward um and I I don't know 99.9 is one in 1,000 what 99.998 is what one in two and a hundred thousand okay okay 
So we're gonna see. We're, we're, we're gonna see what the situation is. I mean, it is, it's, I feel like this is a long way to go. Um, I do think that, again, everything probably is gonna sort of, you know, probably will simmer down for a little is my assumption but once the u.s championship starts uh again all eyes are going to be ha on hans again on the security measures in st louis and i do feel like regardless of result you're going to hear a lot of people saying things you're going to hear things like uh like you know if he's doing well it's like okay look some look like some something clearly is still going on your security is not good enough or if he does really poor this is like see now you use the delay security measures obviously obviously things are different so or, or things have changed so i don't really see a happy ending to this um in the near future i i know a lot of people think it's, it should go away very quickly i don't think it is going anywhere i think this is this is going to be around i mean for for quite a long time at least until hans makes a statement or until like chess.com says something or like fide says something and i don't think any of that stuff is going to happen um is going to happen anytime soon i really don't think it will um so we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see we'll see what 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 happens going forward um but yeah i don't think there's i don't think there's going to be a happy ending i don't think there's going to be a quick resolution i i know everybody is is everybody wants something to happen like today or tomorrow but i, do, I don't know how do you prevent over the board cheating I mean, honestly, I, I assume, as I said before, I think it's frankly, you're gonna have to have people take off their jackets like, like you have to do in the airport. You, you take off your jackets, probably, probably actually you do this at the airport, right? You have to take off your jacket, you have to take off your shoes. I really think that's gonna happen. I think basically you're gonna have to take off your shoes. You're gonna have to let them like go through your shoes, probably go through your jacket, see if you have anything on any of the pockets, um, literally like fill down the whole jacket. So that's, I, I mean, I think that's what's gonna have to happen that's that's the way that I, that's the way that I uh that's the way that I see it and um I don't know I don't know I think you have to do that and you're gonna have to do probably 30 30 minute delay I, I think 15 minute delay is probably not going to be enough I think it's gonna have to be 30 minute delay and I don't really see any reason why it shouldn't be why it should, you shouldn't have a 30 minute delay honestly because at the end of the day you want players to feel as comfortable as they can be um and I do th I do think if that if that's the case like if you talk to players I do think the majority of players like in the U.S. Championship will probably feel much more comfortable with a 30 minute delay instead of a 15 minute delay. So we'll see. Just hold the events at the airport. Everyone flies to the big ones anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, but it's going to but I do think it's going to be a huge, huge thing. Does delay matter when they're spectators? Well, I'm going to give you guys a hot take on that as well, which is that frankly, at this point in time, for most events, the spectators are online. They are not in person at events. The reason chess has grown so much is because of the internet people no matter where you are around the world can watch these tournaments so i think the vast majority of the audience it's probably like i would say for every person who goes and watches in person it's probably a thousand to one a thousand people online watch for every one person who watches it or a thousand people online for every one person who shows up to the to the actual event so it, was, and it might even be higher than that so with such a um with such uh with such um with such such like so many more people online i don't really think that's such a big deal i don't